This video was created for anyone who might feel stuck and even frustrated of playing the same drum parts over and over again. I will show you a method inspired by Mike Johnston's absolute masterclass about flow that really changed my perception. Now, the formula is very, very simple, but without consistency and serious practice, it simply won't work. So please allow me showing you the steps I followed in order to create this really cool 16th note drum fill from scratch. Before diving into the exercise, we need to define some of the basic components of our drum fill. These are the length, time signature, and subdivision. So in this case, we're going to play a one measure drum fill, which we will play in 4-4, meaning that we will divide our measure into four equal beats. And our subdivision is going to be 16th notes, meaning that each one of the beats we're going to divide into four equal parts or four equal subdivisions called 16th notes. We're going to count them like this. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. Once we have defined our parameters, the next step is to choose a sticking. So in order to come up with something more unique and more creative, we're going to stay away from our right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. All right, so we're going to try to combine, we're going to try to come up with a very unique sticking. In order to do this, I created this table with all 16 different possibilities of combining our hands to create groupings of four. In this case, I went with 1A for beat one, which is right, left, right, left. In beat two, we're gonna go with its opposite, which is left, right, left, right. In beat three, we're gonna go with 2C, which is left, right, right, left. And then in beat four, we're gonna play 1A one more time, which is right, left, right, left. If you're not familiar with this type of exercise, I really recommend you checking out this video. It's a one hour workout with 24 different patterns from stick control. It's very, very helpful. So please go check it out if you feel like you need to. Something very, something very important that I forgot to say earlier is that first we need to be able to play this without accents because if I play it with accents, I'm going to rely on, on that musical cue or the rhythmic cue. And that's, that's going to be like cheating at first. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to play that pattern and make every note sound the same, something like this. Something that helped me a lot memorizing this pattern was to play quarter notes with my feet. And even though it was very challenging at first, with time and practice, it became easier. And then eventually it really helped me lining everything up and improving the placement of each one of my notes. So this is what it sounds like. Three E and a, four E and a. course when you practice this over and over and over and over speed just becomes a consequence of it I didn't practice this at higher speeds I was just able to play it faster just from playing it and practicing it slow now that I have that pattern down I can add some accents here, you literally can do anything you want. You can accent any notes you want. Everything is going to give you a different musical pattern. In, in this case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to accent all the right hands first, then all the left hands. And this is what it sounds like with the right hand. Three E and a, four E and a.
Now with the left hand, three, E and a, four, E and a. Once you feel comfortable playing accents with both hands and you can really hear the different musical patterns that accenting each hand makes, it becomes easier to improvise and even move things around like this for example. Once you get to this point, it becomes pretty easy just to orchestrate things. All we need to do is decide where each stroke is going to land. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my right hand accent on the snare for beat one. The E of one, I'm going to go the snare drum. Then the and of one, I'm going to hit another accent, this time on the floor tom. And then I'm going to keep the A of one and the snare drum ghosted as well. It's going to sound like this. Then beat two, I'm going to play another ghost note on beat two on the snare drum with my left hand. Then the E of two, I'm going to play on the hi-hat. Then the and of two, I'm going to play another ghost note on my snare drum with my left hand. And then the A of two is going to be a right hand on the floor tom. And one more thing, in order to get that hi-hat a little bit like a cooler sound to add more crisp to it, I'm going to play the bass drum and open the hi-hat like this. That's what I'm going to do on the E of two. What I have so far is this. Then beat three is left, right, right, left. I'm gonna play accents on the snare with my left hand and I'm gonna keep this time my right hand ghosted on the snare like this. So the whole thing so far sounds like this. And then finally we have a right, left, right, left to finish it off. You can do anything you want there. What I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to go like that. So four E on the snare and a uh, on the floor tom. So the whole thing sounds like this. So there you have it. I really hope this helps. Try it out. Try all the different stickings. It's really fun. The first one, the second one is probably going to take a longer time. But then once you get used to this, it's really going to expand your vocabulary. Mike Johnston was right. This is an amazing way to create new drum parts. What you can't really see in this video is the amount of work and amount of practice I had to put to get to this, to this point right now. I know some people learn really fast. Some people don't learn as fast. I, I feel like I need to work a lot in order to learn these things. So I've, I've gone through a lot. If you feel like you need assistance, if you feel like you're stuck and you need some guidance, right now I'm offering one-on-one -on -one Zoom lessons. The first lesson is completely free of charge. All you have to do is email me to info at drumnationtv.com and I'll do my best to help you create an efficient practice plan and to keep track of your, of your results as well. My goal is to help everyone around me become a better drummer and in the process becoming a better drummer myself. So let's get to work, let's practice, let's take this seriously. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please write them in the comment section below. And other than that, if you like this type of content, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This is really gonna help me move forward in improving my production and hopefully posting these kind of videos more often. So thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.